Hello, my name is Donna Samuels and I work in visitor experience and interpretation at the Ruby Museum of Art in Chelsea, Manhattan. In our museum, we explore Himalayan cultures and ideas already presented in our arts and artifacts throughout our collection. We are continuing our daily video series in hopes that we can allow you to stay connected to our art, but to also give an opportunity for some guided reflection and contemplation as we all navigate this very tricky time. So for today, our practice will focus on wisdom and how that can be a pathway to openness and self-correction. And for that, we look to the mother of all Buddhas, Prajna Paramita. Here depicted in this illuminated manuscript from 14th century Tibet is Prajna Paramita. She is yellow in color, fully seated on a lotus throne. She has four arms and is draped in royal robes. Above her is a rainbow that ends at the two deities by her side. Prajna Paramita embodies wisdom and is considered the mother of all enlightened beings because wisdom gives way to liberation. So without her teachings, enlightenment would not be possible. Wisdom is a very important concept within Buddhism as it is a foil to ignorance, one of the three poisons within Buddhism, the other two being attachment and aversion. To overcome ignorance, one must remain open and willing to self-correct as they gain wisdom throughout their lives and have to break attachment from what they believe to be true. To further explain Prajna Paramita and self-correction, our host for today, Venerable Tenzin Priyadarshi, will lead us into a practice. I'm Tenzin Priyadarshi, a Buddhist monk, and I run the Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformative Values at MIT. Today, we shall focus on a wonderful lady. Pragya Paramita, the mother of perfection. It's a personification of this Pragya Paramita genre of wisdom text in the Buddhist tradition. In my first, uh, so to speak, meeting with uh, uh, Pragya Paramita, the deity, the image, the manifestation, happened. Uh, in my childhood, I was around uh, perhaps 11 years old, and uh, I was visiting Nalanda University, the old ruins of Nalanda University, with some friends, with some fellow monks and some visitors. In those days, one could approach the ruins much closely, uh, and very few images had survived the numerous invasions, the successive invasions that uh, destroyed Nalanda in the uh, late 11th century. And one of the images that survived was this beautiful feminine deity of Pragya Paramita, perfection of wisdom. And uh, beautiful deity evoking all qualities of wisdom, or truly uh, a wonderful personification, manifestation of this day. Most of us are aware with uh, at least one form of the Perfection of Wisdom text, the Pragya Paramita Hridaya, or the Heart Sutra. The Heart Sutra is uh, frequently recited in many Buddhist traditions uh, across uh, India, Tibet, Japan, Korea, to the point that the Heart Sutra has taken a life of its own. And it's a beautiful text that speaks to the perfection of wisdom, speaks to the cultivation of perfection of wisdom. And the ode to Pragya Paramita, in Sanskrit, Pragya Paramita Mata Sarbuddho Daya Param Triyanuklabdi Rupa Sarvagyana Gocha, that the Great Mother, the perfection of wisdom, who is leading all forms of wisdom, who shows, who uh, reveals all forms of wisdom. And this idea that perfection of wisdom abides in all things, that if we are able to overcome the obstacles, the obscurations of the mind, ignorance, attachment, and 
the obscurations that are afflictive in nature. That when we are able to overcome those things, then truly we are able to see true wisdom face to face. In the Heart Sutra, as it is mentioned, that a practitioner must begin to see that all things are illusory in nature. By illusory, it does not just mean that they don't happen, that they don't exist. It simply implies that oftentimes the way we think they exist or the way we think they should exist, that is not the case. So, Pragya Paramita is a beautiful encouragement that we must learn to continue to be curious, but at the same time, learn to self-correct. Self-correct in the sense that we should not give in to ignorance. And ignorance are of two forms, primarily. One is simply not knowing of something, a benign form of ignorance. Somebody asks me something, do you know this? And I say, no, I don't. But it triggers a sense of curiosity that perhaps I would want to know. But the second form of ignorance is the misknowing of something. The misknowing of something that is counter to the prevailing set of data. So the idea that despite of all the evidence, if I believe that the earth is flat, that is misknowing of something. But more importantly, when I grasp to this misnomer. This grasping could occur in terms of the grasping of my views, the grasping of my opinion, the grasping of what I think I know and I believe that it is true. That form of misnomer is toxic. That form of misnomer is dangerous because there is no desire to self-correct. There is no desire to know if an alternate perspective exists, if an alternate form of knowledge exists. So focusing on this behavior of self-correction, that is an important aspect of a practitioner's life. So I would encourage you all that as you contemplate the perfection of wisdom, to start to think about what are my own views that I grasp to, that I cling to too strongly. How can I correct them? How can I gently move towards wisdom? Thank you. I recently penned down some aspects of my life, my learnings, my meeting with tremendous individuals whom I have been fortunate to call teachers and virtuous friends and spiritual friends. The book, Running Toward Mystery, Adventures of an Unconventional Life, is released by Random House US and is available in separate formats. I hope you'll find it useful. Thank you. And those of you who wish to, you're welcome to leave comments in the section below, which is a way of enriching and enlivening the community that we are creating. Thank you.